Hi, I'm Bart Hansen, the owner and operator of CrushLivePoker.com. For the best in poker strategy, subscribe to the channel. Today I'm going to go over a hand that I played against Stephen Chidwick from early on in day two from the 2017 Los Angeles Poker Classic main event, which was a $10,000 buy-in in February of 2017. Now, Chidwick had actually bought directly into day two for 30,000 in chips, and he had actually worked his way up to about 45,000 in chips. And the following hand goes down at 501,000 with a 1K ante. And I have got about 75K in chips. I've been doing pretty well for myself. And it's the second level of day two. So at 501,000, I pick up king queen offsuit with the queen of diamonds, and I open to $2,400 from under the gun. Now, it gets folded back around to Chidwick, who's actually in the big blind, and he makes the call. So we take the flop heads up. Now, the board comes out king of diamonds, jack of clubs, three of diamonds. So I flop top pair. Now, this is interesting because I really feel like king high boards are really some of the more over- c-bet boards what i mean by that is is that people will represent the king quite a bit but when they open pre-flop a lot of times they're very ace heavy especially if you're up against an opponent that's always raising say ace x of diamonds like ace four of diamonds ace five of diamonds something like that but you're not going to see people opening king x suited especially from up front so when somebody opens with like ace 10 and it comes king jack three they're gonna bet obviously and sometimes they'll bet even if they don't have a straight draw so i think this is a really good spot for me to bet for value because i think that i'm going to get called by worse quite a bit chidwick also understands the math he knows he's getting odds in the big blind with the antis so i do expect him to um, complete with a call with a lot of hands so he checks to me and i decide to bet 2800 he thinks about it for about 5 or 10 seconds, you know, not really a long time, and he makes the call. Now, he could have a weaker king, you know, king x suited that he would complete with in the big blind. He could have a jack. He could have queen 10. He might even have a hand like ace 10 or ace queen. Occasionally, he might have ace king that he just flatted because I raised from under the gun, but the chances of that happening are unlikely because I think he three bets that hand some of the time, and of course I have a king. So I'm feeling pretty good about my hand right now. The turn is the five of spades, total brick. And he checks to me once again. Now this is a spot where I see people with my specific hand just check back a lot. They just check back for pot control. They don't really know what they're gonna do if they get raised. But one of the things that I noticed about this tournament and kind of a trend in tournaments over say the last few years is that people rarely check raise the turn with a draw and well, to be honest with you you're really check raising the flop with a draw unless you get really really short where somebody calls with like 15 big blinds effective so there's really no reason for me to not bet here for value even to deny him some free equity with a hand like ace 10 which is one over card and a gut shot uh, i don't actually even mind just taking the pot down right here and i still don't think that he's going to fold the king and because people pot control so much he still might even call with a jack here so after he checks i bet 5200 he thinks about it for a while about 15 or 20 seconds and he finally calls once again now at this point he's put in a, somewhere around 10,000 chips starting with about 45 big blinds so he's already put in about a quarter of his stack and the pot is ballooned, you know, up quite a bit. Well, the river rolls off, and it's the queen of spades for a final board of king, jack, three with front door diamonds, five of spades, queen of spades. And he doesn't take too much time, and he checks me once again. Now, here with top two pair, this is an absolute must value bet. And it actually, I think, works out pretty well for me with the queen coming here at the end. 
Because so many times, if a player were to bet, say, pocket aces or ace-king on the river with this pot size in a tournament, a lot of times they're just going to check it back. They're scared that their opponent might have a hand like king-queen or queen-jack, something like that, so they won't bet one pair here at the end. But for me, with basically top two here, this is a must bet. And I think that this works into an advantage here for me because I think Chidwick might think I'm actually somewhat polarized here in the sense that I'm only betting very strong hands, better than aces, or bluffs. So I think about it for a while and I decide to bet 11,500. 11,500, you know, just over about a uh, half pot size bet. And he thinks about it for a long time. Now, I wasn't really concerned about him really check-raising me. I mean, in order for him to have made some sort of hand here with a queen, he would really have to have probably a straight draw and a flush draw, like a hand like ace-10 of diamonds, 9-10 of diamonds, something like that. I mean, I guess occasionally he could have ace-10 offsuit with the ace of diamonds, and he was going to represent front door diamonds, but... I just think that that's a pretty small portion of his range. So I wasn't overly concerned about being check raised, and I thought that this was an absolute value bet. He thought about it for 20, 25 seconds, and he finally made the call, and I was good. And I won about half his stack on that pot, and it's just some extra value that I got because I feel like people will check back that turn so much. Hey guys, if you like what you've seen here, please click on the subscribe button and you'll get notified every time we put up a new video. And if you want to check out CrushLivePoker.com for the first month free, use the code YTA100, click on the link right there.